So up next, I'm joined by Bruce and Pranami, who are going to be talking about how you can use MCPs to, um, or how you can build and protect MCPs faster with governance using Azure API management. So take it away. So Azure API management is integrated into the wider MCP ecosystem at Microsoft to empower your agents by helping developers easily build secure MCP servers. These MCP servers provide tools for agents to consume through MCP clients such as VS Code and AI Foundry. Azure API management acts as an AI gateway to support MC MCP applications in two key ways. First, by allowing you to transform your existing API management APIs into remote MCP servers and configure your API operations as tools. And secondly, API management allows you to protect and secure your existing MCP servers by providing authorization and authentication capabilities that are already built into Azure API management. And using these capabilities, you can ensure that your MCP servers conform to the official authorization spec published by Anthropic without all of the headache. And so now we're going to jump into a live demo of the first scenario which is converting your APIs into MCP servers. So here I have my Azure API Management instance open in Azure Portal. And I'm going to go to my APIs blade. And I'm going to go ahead and import a brand new API. I already have my REST API specification. So let's just go ahead and select it here. It's called Pet Store. I'm going to give it an API URL suffix and also assign it to my API Management product group. Great, and so you can see that's been successfully created, and I can see a list of all my operations here and attached policies if I want to. But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and go over to the new MCP servers blade. And in this blade, I can create a new MCP server. I can select that Swagger Pet Store API I just made. And I can configure exactly which operations I want to expose as my tools. So for now, I don't wanna give my agent too much access, so let's just allow it to query my pet inventory and get the pet statuses. And now it's been created. It gives us a URL that we can directly plug into MCP clients. And let's go into the server. You can see now we have additional configuration information. And I can then uh, choose to change which operations I want to make the tools. So for now, let's just leave it as is. And finally, we can utilize policies on top of your MCP server. And so these policies allow you to, for example, provide security to your MCP server. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, paste in this um, validate JOT policy, which essentially requires that any request to my MCP server require a valid authorization header. And you can develop these policies using VS Code extension, which has inbuilt support for Copilot and policy snippets. So now let's just go ahead and save it. Great. And now let's go to VS Code. So here in VS Code, within our Azure API Management VS Code extension, we now support an MCP server view. So you can expand this MCPs tab, and we can see now the Swagger Pet Store MCP server that I just built. And within this view, I can also see the policy that I just defined directly in the VS Code editor. And I can also see all of the tools that I've added. So in this case, just getting the pet inventory. And finally, if I right click on my API or my MCP server, I can copy the server URL. And you can see we support both the newest streamable HTTP protocol as well as the SSC protocol. So let's go ahead and use the newest protocol. Now let's go to VS Code uh, command prompt and add a new MCP server. Let's go ahead and enter in the URL and let's call this pet store MCP. Great. So now it looks like there's an error. Let's go ahead and take a look. And as you can see, we're getting back a 401. And that's because we have this policy in place that requires us to pass in an authentication or authorization header. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in a config that contains this information. And you can see that now my server is configured with an authorization header that uses my entry ID bearer token. Let me just clear this. 
So now if I try to run my server, it'll ask me to enter in that draw token, and I have it right here. And just like that, it's able to connect to my server securely and identify the tool that I've added. So now let's open up a chat window with our Copilot agent mode. And we can look at our tools here and see that the APIM MCV server is right there, and that's the tool we've added. And now let's just ask it, get my pet store inventory. Great, so it's able to recognize this, uh, you know, the MCV tool that we added, and now it's asking us to run it. We can confirm, and boom, just like that, it successfully ran our MCV tool, which is an APIM API, API APIM API operation. And now let's go back to the MCV blade. Let's go to the configuration, and let's add a new tool. Uh, I now want my agent to be able to add a pet to my store. So let's go ahead and select this one. Let's save it. Great, let's go back to VS Code. And let's just restart. Yeah, and now you can see that it's identified the new tool I've added. So now there's two tools, and I can ask my agent add a new pet, dog named Bruce. And you can see here it also tells us exactly what parameters it's calling this API operation with. And so we can go ahead and validate that and run the tool. And now it's able to run that new tool we added as well. And so for the last step in the process, let's just go back to the blade. And let's delete this MCB server. Let's say we no longer want our agents to, or, or MCB client to have access to it. So let's just delete it here. Let's go back to VS Code. Let's stop our server. And now if we try to run it again, looks like this. I think there's a bit of caching that goes on in the VS Code client, so maybe it takes a bit. But um, yeah, it would return 404. Let's just make sure this got deleted. OK, looks like the delete didn't go through, so let's try that again. Interesting. OK, so it looks like the deletion isn't working, maybe a portal experience, but that's fine. Um, and so the last thing I want to showcase now is that the MCB servers that you have built have all the existing capabilities that you've come to know and love in Azure API Management. And included in that is monitoring. So if we go to Application Insights, we can actually directly view all of the incoming requests that we received from your MCB servers, uh, as well as track response time, failure rate, and et cetera. So just to summarize, we, sh we just showed how, in a few minutes, uh, how easy it is to transform your REST API into a remote MCB server that supports both SSC and streamable HTTP, how you can then configure your API operations to be tools that can be used by agents, and also how you can maintain governance and observability over your MCB servers by using the API management features you have all come to know and love, including policies and monitoring. Now I'll hand it off to Pranami to showcase how you can secure your existing MCB servers. We just saw how you can transform your APIs into remote MCP servers. Awesome, right? Let's talk about security. Behind these MCP servers lies your enterprise data, and that needs security. If it's not secured, it's just one click away from an unauthorized access. So that's where APIM now steps in as your auth gateway. The diagram here, we see we have multiple MCP clients and remote MCP servers that can talk to each other and we are seeing that APIM is coming in between and supporting the OAuth protocol, which is supporting authenticating and authorizing the users via Microsoft Entra ID as your auth provider. Just to mix it up a little bit, we have seen a lot of demos about VS Code and GitHub Copilot. I'm gonna be using Claude as your AI agent, and I'll be showing you a demo on how you can protect your remote MCP server and talk to them using Claude as your MCP client. Let's see it in action. So for this demo, I'm using uh, AZD up here. Um, it's a command that you can use to run and spin up your APIM instances so that you have everything running in just like a few minutes and have your APIM set up with the auth policies and everything to secure your remote MCP server. Let's see it in action. Let's 
So I'm just running this command here, and uh, once it's run, uh, it will provide me with the endpoint that I should be using to talk to my MCP server from the MCP client. Let's wait for it. OK, so we can see that it just emitted the endpoint here. And now we can just use that and run the MCP inspector to see what are the tools that we have available. For this demo, I have Azure Functions that I'm using as my remote MCP server that has just three simple tools implemented, which is Git and Save Snippet. And of course, how can you go without Hello MCP? So let's just see it in action. Uh, once this is run, uh, I'm going to copy the endpoint that I just got, which is my APM endpoint. I'm just going to copy and paste it into the browser to see the list of tools available. Obviously, in the back, it's going to go through authentication, but it's not asking me for permissions here because I've already authenticated myself from a different client. And it already has my user context. So we can see the list of tools here, and see it's connected. It's get snippet, hello MCP, and save snippet. Let's see it in real world using Claude as your MCP client. Claude recently uh, announced that you can connect custom integrations into it. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the settings, and I'm going to just end a custom integration with my APIM endpoint. So I'm just going to put the same URL that I used for MCP client as an inspector, and I'm just going to give it a name. Let's add it. Once that's added, um, I should be able to connect to this endpoint and should be able to authenticate and authorize myself. Let's go to the chat and start a new chat here. And then you see these three dots here. Once I click on it, you will see we have a new tool here, new server, which is MCP APIM Art Gateway that we just added. Let's hit connect. Once you hit connect there, you should see an auth screen popping up asking for authentication. That's governed by Entra in the back. So it's asking for your permissions. It's asking you to sign in. Let's hit accept, and it will navigate us or redirect us to the cloud again. Once that's done, I should be able to see the tools that I just showed you in the MCP inspector. OK, so we are authenticated. And let's just hit the three dots again. It should show us three tools, the exact same tools that we just saw in MCP inspector. Let's use one of those. Let's try to save a snippet and just say, can you help me save a snippet? It should ask me few parameters, because that's how my functions are implemented. So it's going to ask me to give it a name and the content. Let's give it a name, and let's give it some content here. Once that's done, it should be able to save the snippet. OK. So let's just save it. And it should be asking me for consent again. I hit allow once. And we should be able to see that the snippet is being saved. Great. We talked a lot about the how it works in action. Let's talk behind the scenes. What happens? So MCP has a protocol, which is how you start an auth flow. So basically, what happens is whenever an auth flow starts, any MCP client talks to the MCP server and asks for the metadata discovery. If there is metadata endpoints available, the client uses those. If not, it uses the default endpoints, which are our three endpoints, authorization, token, and registration endpoint. That's what we have implemented inside the APIM. I'm just going to take you to the APIM now and showcase how it looks like. This is my APIM instance that was spinned up when I ran the command azd up. After that, let's look at the APIs. The azd up command not only just spinned up my APIs and operations, but also added some policies to these APIs. One is MCP API, another is the OAuth. MCP API is going to let you Con establish the communication between the client and the server. And OAuth is where the magic happens, where all the authentication and security happens. These are the two endpoints. That's what any client uses to talk to your remote MCP server. And these are the endpoints for OAuth that I just talked about that needs to be implemented. Authorize, call, register, and token endpoint. So here, APIM is acting as both a client and an auth server. Client for the entra. As an, because Entra is acting as an auth server and an auth server for your MCP client. And that's how you can secure your remote MCP servers. So let's just summarize what we just did. Uh, we just saw how you can transform your APIs into MCP server. 
And then we saw how you can secure your remote MCP servers with Azure API management. That's all we have for the demo. Uh, for more information and for resources, please stop by our booth and let us know if you have any questions or suggestions.